All right, let's find a shotgun to review using the shotgun finder tool. I've been looking for a waterfowl gun. I would like it to be inertia. And how about, yeah, let's do a 12 gauge chamber size three and a half. What do we come up with that we have not reviewed yet? Ah, here's one. The Brita B 3.5 SM. They are now being imported back to the United States. I'm excited to check these out. As you can see, we don't have a video. That's about to change right now. Paul, thank you. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Target Focus Life. Today, we have our first ever Brita review. No, I didn't say Beretta. I didn't say Browning. I didn't say Benelli. I said Brita. B-R-E-D-A. Although there is crossover with one of those companies I listed. We have the Brita 3.5 SM waterfowl shotgun. So if you're looking for a detailed and in-depth review, you've come to the right place. Let's go. Brita. Have you ever heard of Brita? I want you to put down the comments. Yes, I have. No, I've never heard of them. Just curious. Brita has been around for a long time. In fact, they started out in the 1800s making locomotives and they're based out of Italy. It was 1947, I believe, when they made their first sporting long gun. So they've been making shotguns for a long time out of Italy. This Brita 3.5 SM is a waterfowl gun, three and a half inch as the name implies. This is what Brita has to say about it. With its proven reliability, exceptional performance, and the ability to handle a wide range of cartridges, the Brita B 3.5 SM Black is the go-to choice for American waterfowl hunters who demand nothing but the best from their shotgun. There's more. Whether you're hunting in flooded timber, open marshes, or any other challenging environment, the B 3.5 SM will deliver the results you need to make every hunt a success. I don't know about you, but I want one. I want one right now. This is a 12 gauge shotgun, three and a half inch, as we've already mentioned. It does uh, come in black or there's some camo options, but MSRP of the black is $2,100. So we're not talking a cheap shotgun here at all. And if you're looking at this gun, you're going, kind of looks similar to another gun on the market. And there is some crossover. This has the inertia system, the famous, what a lot of people call Benelli inertia system. But an interesting fact is that Bruno Savalani, probably butchered that, actually patented his inertia action with the rotating bolt head in the 1960s. And then he licensed it to the newly formed Benelli Company, or Benelli Army Spa, or SPA, I don't know how you say that. I'm not Italian, as you can tell, of which Brita was an owner. So Brita was an owner of Benelli. The, the visionary Bruno Civilani came up with this bolt system and licensed it to Benelli, so I didn't know that. I thought that was fascinating. You do see a lot of guns out there with the Benelli inertia bolt after I think their patent expired a few years back, but this isn't a knockoff because it actually started with Brita to the best of my knowledge. So I found that super fascinating, but this is a very similar gun in a lot of ways to maybe a Super Black Eagle 3. Uh, we'll break it apart a little bit later and maybe in the future we'll do a shotgun showdown between the two. So this gun, according to the manufacturer, is right around 7.5 pounds, 7.05 pounds. Let's uh, zero that out, see what we come in at. Seven pounds, 5.6 ounces, so right there. And this is a 28 inch, I believe, because it, it's available in 28 or 30. That looks like a 28 inch barrel to me. So about almost seven and a half pounds, seven pounds, 5.56 ounces. That's a good weight for me for a waterfall gun. I don't want it too light, to be honest with you. The lighter it is, more recoil you're gonna feel. You're not lugging them around for long distances like an upland gun. Other specs to look at, the B 3.5 SM comes with five interchangeable flush mount chokes. Let's take a look at that trigger. Ooh. A little bit of pre-travel there, not terrible. It's not a, 
not super heavy. It's less than seven pounds for sure. Might be in the, is it sub six even? Let's find out. Yes, five pounds, 5.5 ounces. Let's try another one. Four pounds, 14.9 ounces. So sub five on that one. Five pounds, 6.7 ounces. So five pounds, five ounces seems to be the average. We had that one real light pull, pretty good trigger. Pretty decent. We'll learn more as we get to shooting this gun fast here towards the end. A few other specs, I couldn't find these online, but we'll look at a length of pull, 14 and a quarter. And we'll look at the drop here. We got an inch and a half at the comb and two and a quarter. So three quarter inches of drop. Length of pull is a little bit short uh, for me. This appears to be similar to the Benelli versions where you can just pull that off. I'd be curious to see how this holds up over time, if people have issues with these or not. But I believe there's replacements for these that uh, you can get a little bit longer. I mean, I do like the ease of that if it holds up over time. All right, ergonomics. That's the feel, the function, the form, the finesse, the fantasticness. Okay, I ran out of good F words. The first thing I notice about this gun is the way it feels in the hands. Not only the ergonomics, but the soft touch finish they have on it. I really like that. Some other guns have it. Some have had it in the past. Like Browning, they had issues with their Dura Touch. But I love the way it feels in the hands. It just gives you a sure grip. Sometimes those hard polymers, plastics, when, when your hands are sweaty or wet, they get real slippery. You don't even have to be on the texture of this gun, which is subtle. It's more of a, a stippling. It's very subtle, but I really like it. To reach the trigger, I am kind of rubbing right here on the side of the receiver. I mean, you find that more so on hunting shotguns, not as much on sporting. If that happened on a sporting gun, I would say that's a deal killer for me. I like the contours of the forend, very similar to another Italian company. Thumb fits real nice in there, can point a finger, can hold it like this, however you want. Feels good in the hands. Maybe a little bit light out front. Mounts and swings nice. You got this soft, uh, that's more of just a rubber cheek uh, piece on the comb. It's a clean looking gun, just sharp and clean looking. One thing I really like, look at this. Oversized bolt release. They just make that super easy. Oversized bolt handle. I like that. Safety is standard, standard cross bolt safety. Not much beveling. There's a little bit of beveling going on here in the loading port. We got a flat, flat rib. In fact, from the receiver line, it actually drops down a little bit here, which I'm not sure what I think of. I'll let you know soon. It sort of makes the rib disappear. And all you can see is the bead when you do that, when you mount it up. Yeah, I, I mean, I kind of like that, to be honest. Fiber on the front, vented rib. You got mounts for your sling on the forend cap, back on the stock. It is cut on top if you ever wanted to add mounts for an optic, you have that option. But to me, that soft touch, that's a highlight of the ergonomics. Just feels really good in the hands. Mounts nice, like I've already said, but enough talking. We got to get to shooting this thing. We're going to look at recoil and reliability. It is inertia gun. I do expect there to be a little bit more recoil to it, but being right around seven and a half pounds, I expect it to be manageable. We're gonna start with some target loads. These are the Axle X-Core. I've been wearing them pretty much all summer. Really like them. If you wanna check out more info and discount code in the description. As with anything, eyes, ears, TFL merch, Falcon Strikes, all that stuff. Carlson's Choke Tubes, we have links down below. Let's start with some Federal Top Gun ounce and an eight and see how this B 3.5 SM runs. I mean, that's an inertia gun with target loads. Bolt is a little bit slow. That's pretty common in these inertia guns. I can feel it just, it's a little, little sluggish. That being said, who's gonna shoot faster than, usually don't even shoot any faster than that, right? It's ejecting shells pretty well though. I mean, that's pretty fast. Ejected from the hip. How about this, y'all? Yeah. 
three and a half inch gun, inertia, target loads, not the best combo. I have shot other three and a half inch guns that will do that, but not very common. Most three and a half inch inertia guns will not do that. Let's shoot a clay. That gives us a better idea. Just one off here. It's manageable. I wouldn't want it for a target gun, but very manageable. But you're not buying this to shoot target loads. Let's go to the Federal Speed Shock. Ounce and a quarter, 1,450 feet per second, two shot steel. I'm gonna shoot this four machine, Promatic four coming from right to left. Oh, that's a dead duck. How about this? We get a six. This duck got scared. He's gonna be hauling. I'm gonna throw it. There he is. Oh, that one got away. Recoil, though, I am actually quite impressed with. There are a lot of these guns that end up kicking me in the face. This one feels good, but I want to kill that six. Got it on the second shot. I'm actually quite impressed, ladies and gentlemen. This is shooting good. Let's try a three. It's up in the air. Oh, yeah. Just crushing. Three inch waterfowl loads over the head. This gun feels great in the hands. I am really enjoying how well this shoots. Recoil, I'm impressed. Reliability, I think it seems right on par with three and a half inch inertia guns, but really no issues at all. I've already said it, but I'm impressed with how well this shot the waterfowl loads. Like, holy smokes, I expect there to be a lot more recoil. But let's move on from recoil and reliability. Let's take a quick peek at breaking this shotgun down for cleaning purposes. Four end cap off. Oh man, there we just had barrel, four end, and both come off. That was, that was special. We're basically field stripped. Like if you wanted to punch this last pin out, but you can kind of service it right from here. I love the simplicity of this design. Easy to service, easy to maintain, few moving pieces. They don't get super dirty very quick. So that's like, oh, oh my gosh. That has gotta be one of the easier guns. I mean, there's other ones similar to it, right? But I like that a lot. Very cool. This, I'm excited about this gun. One last thing to point out with the quality of this gun is they do drill their barrels. They're not hammer forged barrels. That's supposed to be a cleaner process that doesn't put stress and all these imperfections in the barrel. And some companies will cold treat their barrels to help with that. I don't really know what to believe, but it seems like drilling would be better. But maybe someday we'll have to make a video about that, actually put it to the test. What do y'all think? Brita has been in the United States before. They were imported by a company a handful of years ago. Doesn't sound like they ran things extremely well. This isn't the manufacturer, this is the whoever imported it in the United States. But now it's being imported by a new company, the same company that imports Rite shotguns. Uh, I think they're doing a great job over there at Rite. Those are Turkish made. And so I'm excited to see how these Britas do in the United States. Italian made shotgun, like so many of the favorites that are out there. But that's enough. That's enough gloating over this gun. You know, one thing I'm actually noticing in quality, it looks really good. Uh, I like what I see with this whole gun, except for one thing. As I'm looking at it, and I don't mean to be nitpicky, there are shims right there, which I forgot to mention in ergonomics or specs or wherever that's supposed to go. You can replace shims to adjust your drop and cast. There's only two in the bag. There's one in there. I do like that part, but what I don't like it's a pretty solid lip right there where that shim sticks out. Like if I was going to keep this gun, I would probably score that with a knife and then grind it down because I just, I don't like there to be a ridge there. That's the only thing I can say as far as quality. Everything else seems pretty top notch. But enough talking, right? Let's get down to the nitty gritty and let's do some speed shooting. On the clock, how fast can we shoot this gun? Get it mounted and shoot three shots. This tells me a lot about the trigger, about the recoil, about the pointability. See what we can do. Oh baby. I wasn't quick on that throw, but I was able to get up there quick, mount quick, 
I didn't shoot overly fast, but it was a terrible throw from the beginning. We got a total of 144, not blazing speed, but it almost took me a second to get on it, 0.97, with a 2-3 and a 2-4 split. Let's pick up the pace. I got slower, 145. I got on it at a 0.95, but I had a 2-3 and a 2-7 split. So I gotta get on them faster, and I gotta pick the splits up. So basically, I just need to do it all better than I am. But I've hit every clay I've thrown so far. I like that. Threw a little early. 2-2 two, two and a 2-7 split. Come on, pick it up, bro. You know, I'm gonna focus on just getting a good throw and see how fast I can shoot. I just wanna look at the splits on this one. I like it. I like it a lot. So I didn't worry about panicking. Still got a 2-3 and a 2-1 split. I thought I shot that pretty fast. I, I can never shoot these inertia guns quite as fast as a gas, but that felt great. Just smooth. I am complaining about nothing right now, other than speed. But check this out. I got a 1-8 and 1-6 split. So we know what's possible. Part of it is a little bit of that recoil in the action, but for an inertia gun, I'm liking this. Okay, I know what I need to do. I know what needs to be done here. Just shoot fast, hit all the clays. Shoot, you see that? That was a 1.06, and I think we gotta look back to see if that was legit. A 0.7 to throw, that certainly could be legit. A 1.8 and a 1.8 split, and just dust on those clays. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, this has been one of my favorite inertia shotguns to shoot. Everything seems to work flawlessly. Handles recoil well. It's got great controls. Feels great in the hands. So much to say about this Brita B 3.5 SM. Other than that one little thing. One little thing. We can fix that. No big deal. There's our first look at any Brita shotgun. Would you like to see more Brita reviews? Put it down in the comments. What breed of shotguns would you like to see? And would you like to see us put this B 3.5 SM head to head with any other elite waterfowl shotguns? Thanks so much for watching. Remember, whether you're in the field or in life, you're only gonna hit those shots you're laser focused on. So live target focused. See ya.